Would you just put your hands together right now? Let heaven know. Let the enemy know. Let this world know that there's the people who believe. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man, that's powerful. I feel the presence of the Lord here right in this space, don't you? Amen. I want to read to you from John chapter 11, just a few verses. And uh, we're going to be mindful of uh, the fact that you're sitting in the sun. Uh, but we want to just share a word that the Lord gave us. We briefly touched on it last week when we had our, our setup team here. But I just want to share what the Lord's laid on my heart. I know it's uh, so exciting to be here. My, my girls were so excited about having church today. And uh, I, I saw this somewhere, and I think it's true. All the suits in my closet think I backslid. And uh, my wife said uh, she hasn't worn high heels now in uh, two and a half months, and her back feels a lot better. Amen. But we're so glad that you've come out to the house of the Lord today and uh, to, to experience God's presence. And uh, in John chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Mar Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, check this out, he abode two days still, in the same place where he was. So Mary and Martha said, hey, send word to Jesus. His dear friend is sick. And Jesus said, this sickness not unto death, but God's going to get glory out of this. And he waited two days. I want you to notice that when God delays, he does it intentionally. In verse 14, it says, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe speaking to his disciples. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Verse 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. And then verse 36. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? So Mary, Martha, the friends of Lazarus, the Jewish friends of Lazarus, were all asking this same question that some of us may ask from time to time. And that question is simply, where was Jesus? Where was Jesus? I went through this situation. I had hoped that this would happen. We're seeing a lot of things take place. And many people have this question, where was Jesus? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the fact that it's very powerful. And it relates to where we're living right now. And Jesus, I pray that you would show yourself mighty. That you would speak to our hearts. Grant us direction. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to start by telling you a little story of something that happened to us about two months ago. Almost three months ago at the beginning of the quarantine my uh, family and I jumped in the car and took a road trip to visit my parents and my wife's parents in the eastern part of the United States. And while we were there visiting with my mom and dad, uh, my girls had been working on their grandparents to try to get them to get a little puppy. And they said, oh, it'll be so wonderful. Uh, you'll have something to do, something to take care of. And, of course, uh, my, my uh, mother and father were already kind of thinking about it. 
So uh, as it was getting close to the time that our, our stay would finish, they uh, had found a little pet store that was open, and uh, we went, my daughters with their grandparents went to the pet store, and uh, there was one little puppy for sale at the pet store. And uh, of course, I, here's a rule of thumb. You guys ready? Don't go to a pet store if you don't want to come out of there with a pet, especially with a little one, because they're going to fall in love. And uh, my girls, there was one little puppy there, and all puppies are cute, I'm telling you. Now, they may not, the, the full-grown dog may not be cute, but all puppies are cute. And so um, uh, my girls fell in love with the little puppy, and my parents weren't sure. They said, hey, there's some more dogs coming in tomorrow. This is the only one we have. It might be bigger than what you want when it grows up. And so my parents left, and uh, we, we left, and we went to get something to eat. And uh, as soon as we left, of course, Eden was already heartbroken that we were leaving that dog there in the cage. And uh, so she started really working on her uh, Mimi and Poppy and saying, hey, this would be just a perfect dog for you. You, you. We've got to go back. We can't leave that dog there. We've got to go back and get that dog. And so, uh, so finally... Uh, Mimi and Poppy said, okay, I think, I think we're going to do it. So they called the pet store, and they told the guy, hey, I think we're going to, uh, we're going to get the dog. Uh, we're going to come by a little bit after we eat and get the dog. And the guy said, okay. So uh, after we ate, we got in the car, started toward the pet, stop, pet store, and we got a phone call. And uh, the, the pet owner uh, said, the, the store owner said, I'm so sorry, but there was a lady who just showed up. And uh, she got the dog. Now, we will have some more dogs coming in tomorrow, but she got the dog. And, of course, my mother said, okay, okay, thank you, we understand, and hung up. And then shared the information with my daughters. Let me tell you, that didn't go well, especially with, uh, with Eden. Uh, it was probably the biggest disappointment of her life so far in her 10 years of living. Now, we can smile and we, we can laugh. But for her, it was devastating because the whole time she was eating, she was planning how she was going to take care of that puppy that night and uh, spend some time with it and play with it. And they had been talking about it. They already picked out a name for it and all of that. And uh, so my daughter, who Eden, who admittedly is somewhat spoiled, uh, became uh, uh, inconsolable and just weeping and almost hyperventilating. And she said, uh, that's a wicked man that would tell us that we can have that dog and then give it to somebody else. That lady that's getting that dog is going to be mean. She's a witch. And, and we're like, oh, my goodness, what's going on with you? Uh, she was very passionate. She was very disappointed. And she was very heartbroken. Now, my family, we have a list of sayings that our kids have said over the years, and Cambria keeps track of them. We go back and laugh about them. But this was one of those days where one of those sayings was made. As she was weeping and, and gnashing and saying, let's go back, let's go back and get it. Let's try to get there before that lady. Can I go say goodbye? Can I go say goodbye? And then with tear, like tears streaming down her face, she said, Dad, I don't even feel real right now. I don't even feel real right now. And in her experience, in her life, it was so traumatic. She was saying, in essence, I, I don't even feel like this is real. So disappointing. And I know that for many of us, uh, the last few weeks, even the last few months, we found ourselves saying something similar, maybe not in so many words, um, my iPad got too hot and died, so I'm going to have to free, freestyle right now. Uh, we're going through the experiences. Uh, I remember, doesn't seem like, seems like a lifetime ago, when in church I had to announce to everybody that there was a tragic accident, and uh, Kobe Bryant's and his daughter passed away in a helicopter. It just didn't seem real. It's like, th this is not real. And then uh, not long after that, we begin to hear about the devastating wildfires that were eating up Australia. And uh, then came COVID and uh, this sickness that began to impact people that we knew and then caused all of us to be 
locked in our home. I don't know about you, but the first Sunday of our quarantine, I woke up on Sunday morning and uh, we weren't getting ready for church. It didn't feel real. It's like, what is going on? I don't even know how to feel. This doesn't feel right. And then as one Sunday turned into two Sundays, turned into a week, turned into a month, and then two months, no uh, restaurants, no shopping, all of these things, it just affected reality for us and emotionally impacted us. And then toward uh, the later part of the quarantine, we saw some things happen. First of all, we saw uh, the... uh, tragic, malicious killing of, of a young man on the, on the East Coast, Ahmaud Arbery, and uh, it just seemed unreal. This can't happen, not in the United States. And then just about two weeks after that, just two weeks ago, we watched in horror as the clips came out on social media of uh, the man who's Life was sucked out right on the sidewalk there by a a poorly trained or malicious police officer. And our hearts were broken and we're like, this doesn't feel real. And I know that uh, for myself, I already mentioned it the last couple of weeks. I decided that it's time to just just listen to some stories. And... uh, as listening to the stories, I sought to relate and empathize and to feel because the reality is I'll never be able to fully experience what it means to be a black man living in the United States. And uh, to see these things, and it broke all of our hearts. But for those who have grown up black in America, it cut so much deeper because it reminded each of them of experiences that they've had and those that have children concerns and fears about the safety and well-being of their own kids and I think all of us we said this can't be real this can't be the way it is there's got to be change not just the fact that in this particular case police brutality happened but deeper and greater that there are issues, that sin is still at work, and there needs to be healing and change in our land. And then we watched as anarchists, looters, took control of the peaceful protests and fanned the flames until businesses were being looted and burned down. Totally different from the whole world's protest against what they saw was now innocent people were being hurt, Police officers who get, get, gave their life or giving their lives every day to protect us were being hurt and killed. And we were shaking our heads and saying, This doesn't feel real. And I want to know that I want you to know that sometimes in a situation like we've been through, and then what you've been through in your own life, you may similarly ask, like Mary and Martha did, hey. I've grown up in church. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the power of prayer. Why is this happening? See, Mary and Martha were unique because they had a pretty cool friend. They had a friend who ate dinner at their house, spent time with them. They would tell jokes and laugh and have good times. But this friend's name was Jesus, and he also had the power to open blind eyes. They'd seen it. They'd watched as he multiplied bread and worked miracles in their community. But their world was turned upside down when their brother got deathly sick while Jesus was away on a journey. And they sent word to Jesus, wouldn't it be awesome to have a buddy like Jesus? And when things get rough, you can say, hey, Jesus, we need you. Guess what? We do. Amen. And so they said, hey, Jesus, they sent word Your friend that you love is sick. And when Jesus received that word, he turned to his disciples and said, this is not a sickness to death, but this is something that's going to give glory to God. 
Now, we know that there are sicknesses unto death. And when uh, Brother Hernandez, Brother Eli Hernandez, became sick with COVID, we were believing, all of us were believing, that it was going to be a mir- miracle and a testimony. But in God's divine purpose, it was his sickness to death. And we have to accept that. But in Lazarus' case, Jesus said, no, this is not a sickness to death. But God's going to get glory from this situation. But the interesting thing is the Bible says then he paused for two days. Two whole days he delayed. And then he said, let's go see Lazarus. When they got there, the Bible says that uh, when they finally got, uh, made the journey to where he was, that Martha met him because Lazarus was no longer sick. He was dead. And uh, Jesus already knew this. And so she, she declared to uh, him, Jesus, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. Mary shows up a little bit later and says the same thing. Where were you, Jesus? If you had been here, if you had shown up, he would not have died. And then those that followed Mary, the, the mourners, the Jews, showed up and said, hey, this guy opened blind. We saw miracles. Surely if he would have gotten here in time, he could have healed Lazarus. Where were you, Jesus? And I know that sometimes we experience those same emotions. But I want to encourage you today by letting you know If you're in covenant with Jesus Christ and you find yourself wondering where was Jesus, please understand that God has a perfect timing and God has a perfect purpose. We may not understand it right now. We may not even understand it in this life, but we do know, as the old song says, we'll understand it better by and by when the morning comes. And in the meantime, we have to trust that Jesus, whenever he delays, there is purpose to his delays amen now I know that uh, Mary and Martha when Lazarus was taking his final breaths they were thinking oh no we thought Jesus would get here in time where's Jesus oh if only Jesus was here and then suddenly well it's too late where was Jesus but while they were praying for a healing Jesus wanted them to experience a resurrection. And I want to tell you that a resurrection builds a lot more faith than healing, wouldn't you say? That raising this man up out of the grave after four days takes a lot, is a lot greater faith builder than just doing a healing on his body. And so when they arrived uh, at the, at the, the uh, tomb, the Bible says that at that point he had already been dead four days four days now I I learned in my studies that in Jewish belief their belief was that the spirit of a man lingers close to his body once he stops breathing for three days and then it leaves and so Jesus waited for those three days to pass and on the fourth day where there was no hope and the Bible says the body even had begun to stink that that's when Jesus showed up. The point I want you to get from this is Jesus has perfect timing. His timing is appointed because we see things from today going forward. We can see what happened yesterday and we can see what's happening right now, but we don't know what's coming down the road. But the Bible says that the Lord sees the end from the beginning. He sees in reverse. So he already knows what's coming down the road. So while you and I can use our intuition to try to find good timing, he has the benefit of foresight to have perfect timing. That's why we used to sing the song, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He may not come in our timing. He may not come when we want him, but we know that his timing is perfect. How many believe that the timing of the Lord is perfect? Amen. And so as you study through Scripture, you discover that there are appointed times. And God knows when and how. And here's the amazing thing. I've heard this before. There's a couple different ways to say it. One of them is 
The wheels of justice move slow, but they grind exceedingly fine. Or the mill of God moves slowly, but it grinds very fine. What does that mean? It means that sometimes justice, sometimes God's will, sometimes God showing up and doing what he needs to do doesn't happen as quickly as we'd like to see it because the wheels of God sometimes move slowly. But when it says it grinds exceedingly fine, what it means is, is when God does what he is intending to do it, his timing is exquisite and perfect and completely finishes the job. How many believe that right now? That we have to trust God's timing. We have to trust that he is in control and that he's working and that he's fighting for us. Now, I want to close by just mentioning the rest of the story. The rest of the story was the next day, we got up, and my dad, this is after Eden had, uh, had her meltdown in the car. And the next day, my, my dad calls the pet shop. He said, yeah, we got four new puppies in, uh, Havanese poodles. And so we went to the store there. And, of course, as we said, every puppy's beautiful. And these puppies got a hold of my girl's hearts and got a hold of Mimi and Poppy's heart. And uh, they picked out one of the puppies and said, we're going to take it home. And Eden was so excited. But here's another thing that happened. My girls fell in love with another little puppy in the shop and said, we, we got a name for him. His name's going to be Dutch. And, and, and Cambria said, my birthday's right around the corner. And, and I'll pay some money for this. I'll help. And so guess what? Not only did Mimi and Poppy walk out with a dog, but... My girls walked out with a dog as well. And as we were driving back home across the country, I got Eden's attention. And I said, Eden, are you glad now that we didn't get that puppy on that first day? And she said, uh, yep. <laughs> because not only did she get to play with Mimi and Poppy's dog, but there was one that she was able to take home with her as well. In a small way, it's just a microcosm. How that if we insist for our will and get upset and ask, where was God? Where was Jesus? We must understand that God has something that is going to blow our minds, that's going to be even better. Amen? And we may not see it immediately. You may not see it the next day. You may not see it for 10 years. And it may not be till you get to the other side that you see God's reason for what he did. But God is sovereign. God is wise. God is knowledgeable. Amen? He sees the end from the beginning. He has your best interests at heart. He is your heavenly father. Are you with me right now? He wants what's best for you in the long run, not in the short run. And so we've got to trust that when we're asking and where was Jesus? Uh, that Jesus was there all the time, but his timing is perfect. Anybody believe that right now? If you believe that right now, put your hands together. Amen. Amen. God is working. He's working all things together for our good. I want us to stand together right now because as we close this out right now, I want to just say this. I want to say this. In the meantime, in the meantime, we just have to trust God. We have to trust God. Whenever you find yourself asking this question, where was Jesus? It's a sign that something really powerful, really significant is about to take place. I, I accept that. I believe that in my life. And I know that in, in my case, in, in, in our situation here at Life Church, see this building behind us? In my mind, in my spirit, we should have been in there a year ago. And I, I, I look at the uh, bumps in the road, the holdups, the barriers, one after another that seem to be hindering us from being able to complete the project and move in. And then, of course, when the quarantine hit and it was like, we need our building more than ever be able to get back together when the time is right.
Can I be honest that sometimes I was like Mary and Martha? Oh, pastor, come on. You know you are too sometimes. Where was Jesus? God, we prayed about this. I've seen you do miracles for other churches. Can you imagine Mary and Martha when their brother takes his last breath and they're saying, Jesus, we saw you open blind eyes. Where were you? Where were you, Jesus? And I find myself even at times having asked the same question and wondering, God, you forgot about us? Martha said, the one that you love is in trouble. Remember, you love me, Jesus. We serve you. Where were you? Why haven't you come through? When you sense that, I think it's important to understand that God is at work. His timing is impeccable. And listen to me right now. There's always purpose behind God's delays. Always purpose behind God's delays. And so in the meantime, what we have to do is trust God. We have to trust that his timing is per perfect. And that he has purpose even in his delays. And then the third thing we need to do is we just need to praise the Lord. I feel like the greatest thing that we can do is just praise the Lord. Because if we fall out of the habit of praising the Lord, then our perspective is going to be shaped by our disappointment instead of our faith. Are you with me right now? Our viewpoint is going to be shaped by our disappointment instead of our faith. So in the face of any disappointment, in the face of hurt right now, in the face of uncertainty, I wonder what would happen if you would begin to praise the Lord and let your mindset, rather than being shaped by all uh, the narrative happening around you and all the opinions and the mob, that your perspective can be shaped by the fact that you believe that God is great, that he's, he's in control, that he's on the throne, that he knows how many hairs I have on my head, that he sees when I cry in the night and he loves me the Bible says he was moved with the feelings of their infirmities think about this right now Jesus already knew there was going to be a resurrection but when he saw them weeping he started to weep are you with me right now he was touched and so don't think that during God's delay, that he's just letting, looking there smirking at you. Oh, look at him squirm, but I'm going to deliver him. No. He feels our pain. He feels our hurt. But he's not going to let it get his purpose off track. Because he's sovereign. He sees the end from the beginning. Good things happen when we praise the Lord. I just feel like praising him right now. I feel like worshiping him right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you together right now. We lift you up and we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a song that, that was just going through my spirit. It's an old song. Most of you don't even know it. And we're not going to try to make them sing it. <laughs> but it just says, praise the Lord. He can work through those who praise him. Praise the Lord. For our God inhabits praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And those chains that used to bind you serve only to remind you that they drop powerless behind you when you praise him are you with me right now the chains that used to bind you serve only to remind you that they drop powerless 
behind you when you praise him. I wonder what would happen right now, amen, to our mindset, uh, to our perspective, if we would just begin to praise the Lord right now. I I want you to let that praise just come out of your spirit. Uh, Understand that the Lord is still alive, that he's working everything for our good, that the wheels of justice are turning, that God's ultimate purpose is going to be fulfilled in in the end if we'll praise him and worship him. I want us to praise him together right now in this song. Hallelujah.